Hi, and welcome to the best of Homes on Homes. Today, we're looking at the room everyone loves to renovate, the bathroom. If the person renovating your bathroom doesn't know what they're doing, I guarantee you, you will have big problems. Leaks, mold, structural, and sometimes electrical hazards. And fixing problems like that can end up costing more than the original renovation. Unfortunately, too many homeowners learn the hard way. These next stories are great examples of how bad bathroom rentals are like flushing your money down the toilet. Nice. Awesome. Look at the mess. They got a nest of them. Yeah, baby. If you're going to do it, do it right the first time. My hero. It's perfect. On the money. Thank you, guys. You like it? Oh, do I ever. <laughs> When people buy new homes, they think they'll avoid the headaches that come with old homes. But again and again, I see new homes with major problems. Why? Sometimes it's because cheap products were used. Other times, it's wrong installation. And sometimes it's both. Who pays for it in the end? The homeowner. Unfortunately for Gary and Mary Jo, they got caught between a tub and a hard place. Hello. Hello, sir. Hi, Gary. How are you? Mary Jo. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. Look yeah. in. How you doing, Lucy? In this case, Mary Jo and Gary bought a beautiful home. They've been here for three years. And what's happening? Not one, not two, not three, but four tubs in two different bathrooms, identically the same, problem after problem. Okay. Want to take a look? Yeah, come on in. Thank you. We noticed there was rust in the tubs. Spoke to the builder, and they said, sure, no problem. We'll come in. We'll replace the tubs. So I guess we'll start with the main bathroom. Yes, yeah. please. Well, you know, it looks good. Sure, everything it looks good look from nice. the outside. They came in and tore down two rows of tiles, tore the tub out and put in the new tubs. And four months or so after that, we noticed it was happening again. What did you notice? We noticed that the tub started warping, and then the porcelain cracks and then the water pools in the cracks, and then it starts to rust. You would have thought after the second tub installation, somebody would have said, let's buy a better tub. We don't want to come back here again. Let's fix it now so we don't have to come back. But no. This bathroom looks really good right now. Um, I'm not seeing any problems with the tub, but let's go see the other bathroom. Okay. okay. We got smart and we noticed the warning signs. So it wasn't a month after those tubs were in that we saw it starting again. Sorry. Again, nice and clean. Tell me about this one. It's been replaced four times as well. Same as the other bathroom. Same as the other one. All within two years. That's right. Okay, same tub, same tile, same look, same way. Yeah. And when they tore down all the tile and the wall, there was mold like crazy. Whoa, look yeah. at the mold. Whoa. Now, is this on this, this side of the plastic or on the other side of the this plastic? This is on this side of the plastic behind the drywall. So, it's so the drywall it. on it's between here. it. That's here a we, water test to show how the water drains. We've colored the water to make sure that uh, we could illustrate how the t how it is draining and, and where the uh, warpage in the tubs are. And, and then the water pools. Gary and Mary Jo did a good job documenting the problems. Two years and eight tubs later, the cracks were still showing. Clearly, there was a problem with the product and the installation. They were just getting ripped off. So I had to rip it out times two. That drives me insane. Why do my pipes bang? Because they're not secured. So we see your basic cheap tub, okay? All braces, very cheap, thin gauge. We see the foam, and the foam is designed to serve two purposes. Because the gauge is so thin, they'll put the foam on it to keep it nice and rigid on the bottom. But they add a spray foam because they're trying to solve the problem as to why the tubs are buckling. We see mold. It's already starting. You, you see that? It, eh? You can smell it. It's already starting. It's on this side. By code, we wrap the outside stud to protect that stud from moisture. This should be tuck taped to that plastic. It's going to help stop any air movement, which we really want. To go to the extreme of all of this tuck tape in the wrong areas, wrong practice. 
In the winter, Vaporberry's primary purpose is to stop air movement. The problem is, it doesn't stop hot from meeting cold. In this house, improper installation of the vapor bear created a breeding ground for mold. We made sure we enveloped the bathroom the right way. Fifteen and three quarters off the ground. Not all tubs are created equal. A cheaper tub with a thin gauge can buckle and dip when a person climbs in. So we installed a steel tub with a thicker gauge that'll help prevent warping and definitely eliminate the water pooling problem. Since we had two bathrooms, I wanted to make them different. I decided to do a tub in one and a shower in the other. Getting the proper slope is crucial for drainage. That's why I love manufactured shower trays with the slope already built in. It's just smart. Once it's in place, Simple waterproof, and it's ready to tile. Mud it right up to here, and okay. get it across. Two okay. sections. You mud, I'll tile. Last tile is really a pain in the butt, but it looks gorgeous when it's up. Now, this is obviously a back to the tile, and what they've done is, is it looks like they painted it so much that our thin set that we use doesn't bleed through it. Now, we're going to put up all these tile. We're going to let it set a bit. We're going to wet this down and then pull the paper off. If you pull it off too soon, you pull the tiles off. This adhesive is just grabbing it, so that's fantastic. Why do I always gotta pick the hard stuff? Always, always, always. Oh, don't keep it simple. No, no. Gotta go for the luck, right? Could've used any towel. Could've used porcelain, could've used slate. No, I gotta take glass. The builder tried to fix the problem, but you can't use the same product with the same installation and expect a different result. It's simple. Quality products installed the right way give us the results that we want. Let's walk right in. Oh my oh goodness. Oh my god. Oh, this is beautiful. This is awesome. This is outstanding. Underneath this, we have Dietra. On the walls, we have Curdy. It's a waterproof product as well as. Uh, underneath the tile is designed to take the tile based on the 200 year old theory. I love the product. So this is 100% watertight. With everything else, the mold that we found, <laughs> again, is ridiculous. You're never going to see that again. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see the other one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> is this what oh you wanted? Yes. This is this exactly, is exactly what I wanted. What we did is we have a kit that can convert from a tub to a shower stall. So that's exactly what we did. We converted it over. I love this glass tile. Do you? Yeah. Oh, the work that you guys did is just unbelievable. And we can't thank you enough. So I've done my job? And then some. OK. Thank you so Absolute much. Absolute pleasure. No matter pleasure what, keep money. smiling and Thanks, enjoy man. the shower. We will. Christine and Terry's dream bathroom turned into a nightmare. The only thing that didn't go down the drain was their sense of humor. Keep smiling. I'm trying. One thing worked out really well. We did pay him the money. So at least one of us is happy. Welcome back to the best of Homes on Homes. Today we're looking at botched bathrooms, the best of the worst jobs we've been called in to fix. Anytime you're dealing with a plumbing, electrical structure, or HVAC, you need permits. That's why most bathroom rentals require more than one permit. If a contractor tells you you don't need permits, you're at risk, not them. When I first met Christine and Terry, I knew right away they were in big trouble. It is a hot day. Initial deposit, $200. Sounds perfect. Soon as he walked in the door, he wanted 25% of the total contract. Hi. Hello. Hello, come on in. Nice to see you, Christine. Nice Terry. You, Great to see you again. How are you doing today? Within the next two weeks, another 25% of the contract. Guaranteed to be done in four months. Two car garage. Two -car Take garage. one side of it, turn it into a livable space. Yes. Okay. And New I'll kitchen, be... dining room, bedroom upstairs. Yes. So it's just not finished. It's just not finished, and there are some issues. Everything the contractor touched was wrong. Electrical was overloaded. Live wires left hanging 
within reach of the children. We had problems with the air conditioning, problems with the new bathroom, and the only permit they got was for structure. One permit for the job? You gotta be kidding me. Bathroom? Yes. Bathroom. And this was supposed to be our sanctuary. Um, this is probably one of the biggest disappointments. I don't see an access panel in this. Do you have an access panel in the other room? No, and um, unfortunately, the jets in the tub don't work. Um, the jets don't so work? Does anything work? The air, the the air bubbles, air, the air bubbles but the jets work, don't but work. the jets don't work. Christine and Terry started to notice one wrong thing after another. So they withheld that last payment until everything was finished to code. Now that's smart. Of course, the contractor walked off the job. But that turned out to be a good thing. My first concern was the Whirlpool tub. I needed to know why it wasn't working. Because when you're dealing with water and electricity, you need to be sure everything is done right. We see the electrical junction box right on the wall there. Here is the four cable lines. One appears to be slightly unplugged. Maybe that's why the jets aren't working and the aerator is. Now that runs into the wall, which means they're gonna junction somewhere because that's gotta tie into electricity. Exactly. You wanna go in that room and see if there is a receptacle on this wall and take a look to see if it's tied in there? Well, that's what I'm hoping. Let's just start by removing this because that's definitely not a return error. Oh, you, you don't want to see this? No, I don't want to see that. I can... You've got to be kidding and me. And uh, you know why your jacuzzi is not working? Why? The GFI is tripped. You've got to be kidding it's me. It's tripped right there, man. You've freaking got to be kidding me. Turn that on. We got power. They've double GFI'd it. They faked it. The guy knows about this. The panel's right here. Yeah. So now we have a double GFI, which is going to continue to break. Because you can't put take a GFI off a GFI, can you? No, it'll uh, it'll keep tripping on you. So that's the reason why we have a double pole downstairs. I am absolutely outraged that we have spent basically every cent that we could we could mortgage to to create a quality home for a safe home for our family. We paid him a lot of money. Um, with a premise that we're gonna we're gonna get it done right, we're gonna get it done on time, everything's gonna be safe, we're gonna be good to go, and we just certainly didn't get any of that. So we're in the bathroom, and we're ripping out tile because we want to inspect under the tub. Why isn't the jets working or anything else like that? Right away we see some electrical. What do we see? Your tub is plugged into here. Oh my. Two of them are GFI with a GFI downstairs. They are going to fight with each other and keep switching off. It takes one GFI. They should have done it with a break run the panel, but they can't because the panel's loaded and they didn't want to pay to give you a new panel and they didn't want to tell you about it, obviously, because they didn't, did they? Yeah. Talk about a can of worms. In this case, the problem with the Whirlpool tub led us to other electrical issues, a complete wiring mess and an overloaded panel. See how one thing done wrong snowballs into a hundred different problems. Imagine having to pay for all this after already paying for an addition. No support off the back. No support here. No support there. <laughs> Take out all the cripples underneath, all the vertical studs, and then get underneath it and pry it up. Pain in the butt. Look at, they tiled around it. They put the cabinet in place first. They didn't tile behind it. Yo-yos. OK, now, look at that. The motor is barely attached to the tub. Oh, I love these guys. Now they got a hot tub on the deck. Once we got the tub out, Martin fixed the plumbing. But to do that, I had to break tiles, move cabinetry, and then put it all back together again. Cutting corners ends up costing more every single time. No exception. And I'm not just talking money here. Look at what these homeowners go through. Uh, hot's on the left? Yes. Because yes. you had it the other way, right? Yep. When you stand in front of the fixture, the heart should always be on your left-hand side. Agreed. Um, and I knew you would do it right. That's, that's the code requirement. All right, I got to tell you, permits can't guarantee a good contractor, but they help make sure whatever work is done is at least done to code. Don't renovate without them. All righty. In the bathroom. <laughs> glass. Oh, wow, glass. Shower heads, oh, everything. Shower. You can actually have a shower. I can have a shower after you go. <laughs> yeah, actually, we, we, you we, could. We had a long time to have a shower in our own bathroom, so. When I walk in the bathroom, it's just, just like, wow, it's, it's a great bathroom. And that's what we wanted. We wanted to walk into our bathroom, our own bathroom, not the kids, just ours, and go, wow. I'm not sure if we've lost faith, but we are sure a lot more wary 
but who we do have some more work that needs to be done in the basement. Um, we will be very careful. We will we will listen to heed Mike's words very carefully. A wheelchair, two contractors, and one gutted bathroom. Something here just doesn't add up. I want to make sure that I make it comfortable for you. Is that okay Thank with you. you? Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Welcome back to the best of Homes on Homes. Today we're looking at bathroom rentals that left homeowners in the toilet. A bathroom out of order can put your entire house out of order. We all deserve a bathroom that meets our needs, and Kathleen was no exception. So I did whatever I could to make that happen for her. She already been through not one, but two contractors. In this case, third time's a charm. Here's a story for you. We have a woman that lives alone. Been here for 25 years in a condominium. Looking to get, well, make it easier for her to maneuver around her apartment. Mainly the bathroom. She's in a wheelchair. First contractor comes in. She lets him go after a week. He couldn't even understand what she needed. Hello, Kathleen. Hi, Mike. How, How are you today? Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Contractor number two comes in. It gets even more interesting. Did they complete this bathroom? Because I don't see a completion here. I see a bathroom that's uh, in rough shape right now. Second installer put in the sink so close to the wall that there is not room for me to roll in in my wheelchair and get centered on the sink. They got the sink the wrong height about three times, ordered probably six different toilets. About three of them, they ordered they would get out here and then it would not be a disabled height toilet. They built the shower and it was supposed to be 32 inches wide. They built Standard. it. Yes. They built it 37 inches wide. If I had been sitting on the toilet, my left leg would have been in the shower. She's not happy, and I don't blame her. And I like her moxie because she told them right out, I'm not gonna pay you. They took it, I would say, a step farther than what I had anticipated because not only did they come get their things, but they also took out the light switches, the switch for the vent fan, and absolutely stripped it. Uh -huh. They told me that they'd done me a favor and left me walls. And I said, well, that's nice because I had walls before you ever came. The only favor they did you was leaving. She stuck to her guns. She didn't pay them a dime. That's smart. But now all she had was an empty room. I couldn't leave her like that. We had to fix this. We we're working in a condo, so we were limited to what we could do. We needed to give her a bathroom that worked and making it a little more wheelchair friendly. Oh, that's not a surprise. No, very Mickey Mouse. And as you can see, like the whole bucket is sort of rotted out here, right? Mm-hmm. We have uh, two by four studs? Yes, we do. Okay, we'll just screw in a bottom plate, go right across, take out anything that's rusted and rotted. Yep. The beautiful masterpiece of, uh, of a plumbing contractor that, was the, that did the renovation here in the past. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a, something uh, similar to that, but uh, a lot easier in, uh, in construction. I used the MG coupling, and I've made a transition so that I could adjust this ABS fitting for my shower assembly. It's a straightforward connection, a lot easier than, uh, than using uh, tons of silicone, um, which probably didn't work in the first place. Once we got the plumbing squared away, we insulated the walls. This gave us a fire and sound barrier, a bonus when you're living close to neighbors, like in a condo. We also installed the walls in the shower with cement board. All that was left was the waterproof and tile, nice and simple. So we'll do a couple of rows tonight, get started. Get the Dietra down, let it set overnight. Tomorrow morning we come in, we finish off the shower, and we could tile our way out basically any time after that. Can you imagine waiting almost two years for a bathroom that you kind of need? Well, she was done waiting. Kathleen didn't want to move. She didn't want people taking care of her either. I get it. So not only did she get a bathroom, she also got her independence. What more could you ask for? Let's turn left. 
you know, sometimes I don't get this. I really, you know, day in, day out, I fix crap after crap. The stories I really don't understand is people in need. We didn't take any walls out in your hallway. We didn't do anything crazy like that. You know, like, is this all about money? Is this no longer about I care about the person that I'm working for? Look at your bathroom. Look at this. You know what? I love that floor. Oh. Love it, love it, love it. And look at the sink. Oh, I like that. Really, I can just cry because you know the nightmare I went through in this bathroom. Look, it's right. You can almost wash your hair in the sink. It's right. It went so bad for so long, and it just looks perfect. If you're happy, I'm happy. It's going to be really, really nice. It's going to be so amazing because it's going to make it easier for me to manage. It's not just like pretty bathroom. Yes, pretty bathroom, but I can manage on my own. What do you get when a deck guy does your bathroom? Nothing right, that's for sure. Everything it seems that they've touched is falling apart. Oh my God. Do you believe this? It's Pandora's box in here. Welcome back to the best of Homes on Homes. It takes skill to renovate a bathroom the right way. Water, electricity, and ventilation are just a few things you need to think about. Then you need to know what products to use, where to use them, and how. You don't hire a roofer to do a kitchen, and you don't hire a deck builder to do a bathroom. John and Kirsten did, and here's what happened. The kitchen needed to be redone, the bathroom needed to be redone, a lot of the walls had to be fixed and we decided to hire some contractors that had done some work on our previous home. They'd built a deck, and... Um... Hey, how you hey, doing? How are Kirsten, you? John, nice to see you again. In some people's oh, minds, they're gonna look at someone that can build a deck, and they've gotta know how to do an addition, electrical, plumbing, kitchen, bathroom. How was the deck by chance? It was the good. The house was yeah. great. Good deck? <laughs> yeah. Well, we had to take it down because it didn't get permits. Oh. See what happens? Now yeah, that reminds me. Did you get permits here? They didn't say anything about permits. No permits? What damage has been done? Now it's got to come down. Now we got to fix whatever they've compromised and then put it back together again properly. We really wanted a tub and a separate shower, but because of space issues, we knew that we'd be really limited. So we decided to go with the uh, showstopper shower stall. Wow. I know. We had this beautiful slate work done, or so it looked beautiful. And um, we noticed the floor never dried because it wasn't sloped properly in to drain. And it started to get moldy, and it was really hard to keep clean. Now all your paint's peeling. I guess you noticed. The ceiling is one of the uh, parts of the bathroom that they fixed, supposedly. Big chunks of plaster fall on your head while you're in the shower, and and the tiles are cra the grout is cracking, and. It just seems like everything is wrong. We do know that uh, we're gonna get it. We know that it's just not going to be, can we save anything? No, when it's done half wrong, obviously it's all wrong. This Object today is to pull it down. Let's start with pulling all this out, cabinet, toilet, sink, pictures, save all, save all this stuff. Okay. <gasps> Tempered glass is very hard to hit this way. It usually will not break. I'm telling you, I've hit it with sledgehammers. But shock it from the side, this thing will explode. Shock the edge and explode the glass. It's designed to explode in many, many pieces so that if you're in here and you actually do fall against the shock and break it, the idea is it's not gonna be jagged and cut you to pieces. Well, they like silicone, but they didn't put it under this. <clears throat> Here's a great example of how water can get through. It's wet, totally wet and mucky underneath it. So water is gonna get in holes. If this is soaking wet, it's gonna be easy for it to follow the threads down. All you needed was a bead of silicone. I'm gonna pop that towel just to show more than likely it went underneath it. Now, how old is this bathroom? Not that old. There you go. The water got under it. They capped it and yet the on water it. still got in. Oh, you can see the mold on it. Yeah. Look at this. Look at the water in there. That is unbelievable. But that's that's a joke. That water's inside the wall. Yeah. What else is water supposed to do? 
supposed to drain towards the drain. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like we have the drain in the wrong spot, right? Cause yeah. Because here's the lowest point right, right. here. And we're puddling here. I'm going to bring it to the drain. Forward. So we know we have water damage definitely at this area, yep. right? Which means this is going to be saturated, this is going to be saturated, and I can't wait to see the muck bath underneath this. Oh, my God. My That's exactly what I expected. Look at the water in there. Oh, my God. Do you believe this? Look at the water on the underside. Now that's unbelievable. They wanted to shower in a bathtub? Foot soaker. It was inside the box. <laughs> this is a perfect example of why we should hire the right people for the right job. It was only when we got behind the walls that we saw the full extent of the damage this guy actually caused. Look at that. That's tough. That's Feel the spring. weight of that. Yeah. It is soaked. That weighs about, if I were to guess, my god, that weighs about four, four pounds. pounds. Yeah. It's turning black, so not a good sign. The amount of water that was behind the tiles was incredible. Luckily, the contractor put down a waterproof membrane. It was the only thing that saved the floor underneath it. Now, look at that. Hallelujah. The plywood is not wet. It's damp. You can see that it's damp, but it's not wet. Just when I started to give this guy just a little credit, I find out he's completely compromised the structure. He cut into the joists to run the plumbing. That's a no-no. They've notched out the bottom of that beam. They've notched out the top of this beam. Look at that, Mike. It's I know. Split. I know. Oh, man. Yeah, that's great. Now I'm fixing structure. Now we're pulling up the whole floor. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. After rerouting the plumbing, we had to fix the structure by laminating 2 by 8s to the floor joists. You never cut joists. You'd think a deck builder would know that. You need air behind water for it to drain properly. That's why every plumbing drain in your home needs to be vented. Think about it. You need to punch two holes in a can of apple juice to get it to pour properly. Same thing here. We need air behind water for proper flow, but the fixtures in this bathroom, they weren't even vented. We had to fix that too. Each fixture has to have its own vent. Eventually, you're allowed to connect them together as long as you are above the flood level rim of the fixture that is being vented. Now the flood level rim, it is pretty much the height of the fixture. It's the point um, at which the water starts overflowing onto the floor. If we had this connected at the lower level, below the flood level rim, and if there was any blockage in a, in a drain pipe, the water would start flowing or filling the vent system and it would never actually overflow through a, through a pedestal sink. So you would never know that you have an actual blockage in your, in your drain pipe. This hole is for plumbing vent. Martin uh, has been good enough to pre-drill the wood deck to locate where the splashing is going to be installed. So what we want here is at least six inches up off the roof line from the flashing at the short side, which is the back side. That's the minimum code. Um, here we have, you know, approximately eight, ten inches. It's a good amount. That way, if there's snow on the roof and such, it can't build up over and, and close off this pipe. We installed Dietra underlayment on the bathroom floor. This gave us a waterproof barrier between the tile and the structure below. This also prevents tile and grout from cracking. Smart. When it was done, not only did we have a bathroom that was watertight and mold resistant, it looked good too. It was an expensive lesson, but it had a happy ending. Oh my God. Go ahead. Holy smokes. Wow. <laughs> well, it is a simple bathroom. It's not oh a Taj Mahal. Oh my God. That looks amazing. It looks so good. It's, How do you like the red with the black? It looks fantastic. It looks fantastic. It's beautiful. Perfectly sloped with a foam base tray, foam base curb, and totally strong. This is no wood in there. There's nothing in there that's going to be an issue to absorb. Mm -hmm. So all the right products, works all the right ways, and you're not going to be having a bath in your shower anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We put in the new heat, which is a fabulous system. It's extremely efficient for electric and floor heating. But this is the new toy that I like. Just pushing your buttons, the lights come on. Oh, cool. And we tested it. It just heated it up so much we had to open the windows and we were hot in here when we were working. <laughs> and we had to cool it. Isn't that nice? That's wicked. Thank My you absolute very pleasure. Much. Thank you very much. It's great. I get That's to give it. him a hug. <laughs> I'm going to get paid. I'm so happy and it looks better than I ever expected. It's fantastic.
Bathrooms can be challenging, but sometimes the biggest challenge is finding enough space for everything you need. That's when you gotta get creative and plan ahead. Because the toilet's right here, the tub's right here. Let's look at this. How is this door gonna open? This is incentive to stay thin. Welcome back to the best of Homes on Homes. Today we're looking at some of the worst bathroom rentals in over 100 episodes of Homes on Homes. Bathroom layouts can be tough, things can be tight. It takes experience, planning, and know how to do it right. Unfortunately, Alex and Marie hired a contractor who had none of the above. Marie and Alex, simple addition. Expand the house for the two daughters. Here's the problem. Price just over $100,000, right price. Climbs all the way to approximately 170,000 in total costs out of pocket, and everything's wrong. And we do feel trapped, like we can't do anything. It's a beautiful day. Mike is our only viable option to try and make things right. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. See you, Marie. We got all our permits the way we were supposed to get. We're very happy about that. Before the drywall went up, we had inspectors come in and, and they looked at everything, the plumbing, the uh, and all, everything that needed to, and we passed the inspection. New bathroom? New bathroom. Unfinished, still leaks. What do you mean it still leaks? I just wanted to take a bath and lay down in the bath, and I was in there maybe a minute, and my mother-in-law started screaming, there's water coming out of the pot light. Let's continue. Okay, it's gone. So this is our master ensuite. No, this is cute. This is really cute. First of all, this is not how we support a tub, okay? You do not install the tub this way and then just throw a skirt in front of it. Did you see what I just did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we've had plumbers come in and show that to us. He told us it was fine to use. Uh, we haven't touched it. We're too afraid. <laughs> We're in. Every faucet in this house leaks, uh, and we don't have a shower, so right now we have to tub bathe with this little red container. Because the toilet's right here. The tub's right here. Let's look at this. How is this door gonna open? This is incentive to stay thin. The job was over budget, behind schedule, and everything was wrong. You know, that tells me the contractor was in over his head. I can't trust anything he's done, so I had to gut both bathrooms. I needed to see what I was dealing with. Oh, nice, we're ready to rock and roll. Let's pull the tub, pull the floor, inspect all the plumbing. I'm gonna drop the ceiling downstairs to see both bathrooms. Watch yourselves, we're gonna have all kinds of crap fall down. How many times do I gotta see this? You're doing a renovation, you're gutting, you're putting in new plumbing, we see it all the time. What do we have in here, plumbing? What do we have here, an outside wall? What do we do not have is insulation. There we go again. We're up. A nice angle, we're up there, and then this runs down. Sloping down. And that's not supposed to run down, that no. has to be up. That's right, if it's gonna leak, it's gonna leak from that hole. That would never pass inspection. No. We have a kink line here, too. Right there, see the kink? I'll tear out, but just start from scratch again. Piece by piece, I don't see many screws. anybody remove this stuff? No. He drywalled over it. Yes, this when I took this wall off full of uh, tiles, this wall decided to come with it. Never, ever finish anything with leaving the old stuff up. How do we know what's on the wall? You know, that's a good point. Is there mold in behind that? Is there bad electrical in behind that? Has another contractor in been previously in 20, 30 years ago and hit something in the wall? Yet you want to go and put a brand new bathroom up and cover it up? Not a smart move. I build a bathroom that can outlive you if you do it right. It'll outlast you. But do it wrong, you're gonna be doing a new bathroom every five years. It's just the way it is. That's just so pathetic, it's ridiculous. When you're doing a bathroom, you wanna think of everything. Not just the functions of the bathroom, tub, toilet, sink, etc., shower stall. How can we lay it out? What is the best design? We have a square bathroom. Anytime there's a square bathroom, let's center the door. It gives us wall space to use. By bringing the door to one side, it eliminates putting anything on that wall right there. So by centering it, we have toilet, we have sink, and now we've displaced the room to get the tub and shower in, and we can open up that shower door. We took all the plumbing 
out of the house. Okay, right from the main pipe coming in into the house, the drain pipe, and the water service pipe. So you have two pipes coming in the house, which it's almost a little bit easier than a rental because you're not attaching to anything that would be existing. This will be my house now <laughs> and the plumbing. I'll take responsibility for it and it's nice to do it from scratch, it is. We didn't have a choice. We had to get rid of everything. Plumbing, electrical, HVAC. We also had structural repairs. Was it worth it? Absolutely. This family needed to come home and I wanted to show them what a bathroom is supposed to look like when it's done right and we made it right. I made a few changes in here. If you notice, your door's moved over. Because it was in the wrong location. We've now opened really? the door to the toilet okay. so we don't see the toilet. Oh, it works. Okay, look at your shower stall. Oh. It is awesome. Your tub's not going to rock and it's totally safe. It's totally not Good. going to leak and I think you can <laughs> no, now have a shower and, wow. and a bath. And it's not resting on a little piece of styrofoam? I put in a pedestal sink. Beautiful. Okay. Rather than the cabinet, it did not work for me. If you look at this, it looks rather big, doesn't it? Yeah, yes. much more airy. We can actually shower. walk into our shower now, <laughs> open up the door and walk in. This was 100% got it. It looks great. And the shower yeah, works? It works. Yeah. I know, I'm good. It's just tested. Wow. It's not going to leak. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. The family is back. They're happy. Their lives are now, they can move on, they don't have to look back anymore, they don't have to deal with the contractor, and I recommend they don't. Forget about yesterday and move on with today. Keep smiling. We'll see you soon. No kiss from me. Okay, Thanks. thank you. <laughs> Andrew and Gwen hired a contractor who talked a good game, but didn't play by the rules. And they ended up with a bathroom that needed a royal flush. Out of the six people, I guess, that came in, this contractor was the only one who talked about permits. Oh, it's the first time I've done this. After it's done. We just got totally charmed by him. And it was just a really cheap trick. Okay, got it all. Welcome back to the best of Homes on Homes. Today, it's all about bathroom rental nightmares. A bad bathroom rental can lead to problems that compromise other parts of the home also. Remember, a home is a system. Andrew and Gwen watched the show. They did their homework. They knew to ask for permits, but that didn't save them from a contractor who didn't know what he was doing. We had, I guess, about five or six different contractors come in, give us quotes. Out of the six people, I guess, that came in, this contractor was the only one who talked about permits. All the other ones were like, nah, you don't need that, it's okay. And so that was a big red flag for us. Gwen? Yes, hi, oh boy. Mike. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Andrew. Hi, thanks Pleasure for coming. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, we have working right at the front door. Yes, welcome, come on in. Thank you. $25,000 in, 12 weeks later on a promise of a three to four week job. So that's three times the time period that this contractor has requested to do the job. It's not done. Uh, he did not lay this stuff right, did he? Why is that pulling up? We had said, you know, you've gone a month over, things still aren't done. What's your plan to finish? He had no plan. He couldn't tell us how long he was gonna need. It's not sticking. No. Well, that That's was, not the, that was the, uh, the first flag as I asked. I came up and I said, well, are you using modified or unmodified? They said, and I he's love like, this. <laughs> What are you talking about? And I said, no, really, and the instruction says, you know, use different thin set for the curdy, different thin set for laying your tile on top. And he's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Actually, you do. They had enough, and they told him to leave. Nice. Problem was, he wanted to be paid in full. Go figure. But the job wasn't done. So Andrew and Gwen refused to pay. The dispute was settled in court, and the contractor was finally out of the picture. I was in tears and stressed out, and I was like, the only person who could fix this is Mike Holmes. I couldn't finish the job as is. Everything I saw told me I couldn't trust any of the work. It was all coming down. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, is there vapor bear? I don't, uh, nope. So you brought the vapor barrier out. Yeah. What does that tell us? Where's the vapor barrier? The vapor barrier is on the wrong side wrong of the plumbing. Side of the plumbing. I love my job. I love my job. Oh. Okay, so that's level. 
But the gap we have under here, that is huge. That's yeah. a, like that's a finger. Oh. Okay, that didn't bond. You would usually see inset meshed in there like this. Should be covering this whole piece right here. This didn't bond at all. Nice. So, what are we not allowed to do, folks? Cut that much out of a joist. Now, their attempt was to both sides with plywood. You know, did they glue it and screw it? Who the hell knows? But they cut a U shape to allow that. So it's going to actually give it some mm -hmm. strength. It's just not acceptable. You cannot cut it. Yeah. We put weight on here. Shower people coming in. Just me alone walking in here. That's why that ceiling crack is we're getting too much movement in the floor yeah. this way now because the pivot's right here. Right. And I'll bet you if we went downstairs where that line was in the crack, we put a drill through the ceiling, we'd be right here. A bathroom can be a heavy load. The structure underneath it needs to be strong. The contractor compromised that support. So now we had to rerun the plumbing and repair the structure. Because he's glued this and screwed this, this in a way is gonna work. Let's take some of the plywood we pulled up off the floor, rip it to tie in the lengths of the eight footers we're going to do, put a piece down there, glue it and screw it, and then laminate. We're going to then sister in a two by eight, and that is just gonna make it even stronger. So we will keep this plywood to help this load. Hey, screw that sucker, please. Behind the walls of every bathroom should be the same. Watertight and mold resistant. That's a bathroom that lasts. Once you have that, you can get as creative as you want with the finishes. 11, The homeowners were thinking of marble tile, but I chose non-slip porcelain for safety. Marble is slippery when it's wet and things always get wet in the bathroom. Man, it's looking really good, isn't it? You like it? I do. When I came into this job, Gwen and Andrew, they just wanted it done. Very nice. You know, when the toilet's going in, we're almost done. Happy, happy, happy. But there was no way I was going to put a Band-Aid on an open wound. If I see cracks in the ceiling, I'm going to find out why. After all the headaches, Andrew and Gwen got a bathroom that was done right from start to finish. It's a finished bathroom. Wow. Now, obviously, I had to bring the plumbers. We pulled out all the plumbing, fixed the structure of the floor joists, each and every one of them, to redo the plumbing. We did change the tile on the floor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I chose a porcelain that was the close to the look that you wanted with the it. marble. I and yet, I, I like it because I'm looking for a non-slip floor, and your marble is... Mm, I not... like this better, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good sign. Yeah, it's That's nice. a really good sign. It's, yeah. it's gorgeous. This gift, essentially, um, of you guys coming in here and helping us is totally changed our lives. Like, you don't understand how much that's relieved the stress and just knowing that it's done and that we have a home again. So I'm gonna go check on the guys. You go oh, in and play. <laughs> Thank you. Look, I got paid again. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. There's two things that can go wrong with a bathroom rental. Poor products and poor skill. If you screw up either one, you're in trouble. Screw up both and you're gonna wish you had me on speed dial. Bathrooms are a big job. You need a skilled contractor who can make sure everything is done right. Check references. Talk to past clients. The more, the better. And know what a good job looks like. If you find a pro, but they're booked up, take that as a good sign, like eating at a restaurant with a lot of people. The right person is worth the wait. Look at this. That's not the code. No way. <laughs> make it right. Look at that. No way! <laughs> Full name, Mini Mike. <laughs> Belongs to Mike. Stuff with love. You guys made my day. Thank you. I wish people would do it right the first time. For more information about this show, please visit hgtv.ca.